you might want to have Reaper installed even just as a secondary tool. Trust me, wait for it, wait for it. Sometimes you need to batch edit a lot, a lot of clips. Maybe you downloaded some sort of sample pack and they are not properly pre-mixed and they are just all hitting zero. So even though you're not used to looking at it, you might just want to go into file and batch file item converter. This will save you a lot of time when you're dealing with your own samples. Because probably what will happen is whenever you draw all of them into your DAW, you will have something like this where they are just mismatched all over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to normalize them. Remember that normalizing can mean different things in different areas. Normalizing most of the times within the DAW means bringing any file up to zero dB full scale. Normalizing on streaming platform on streaming platforms has to do with a certain output that they give you. So the user experience is a little bit less inconvenient. So one song is not way too louder than the other. And that comes from the whole, you were, you were looking at the TV and one commercial came really loud and then the movie was really low and then a commercial came up and it was really loud. So normalization in that streaming delivery consumer experience means that. But we can also normalize to different levels. So I'll drag all of these items into the batch file item converter. What I will do is I will use a normalize feature and I will normalize them all to minus 21 LUFS momentary. Please use the last reference of what kind of loops you're talking about. Otherwise, it means nothing. So normalize them to minus 21 momentary loops. I will probably don't need any brick wall limiting because usually the peak when I'm setting this around here will be around minus 12 sample related, but it shouldn't be peaking. I can also set up a brick wall limiter true peak at minus 0.5, just in case something is for some reason magically too loud. And I will add a really small fade in of only five milliseconds that will be with a slope with a fast start and a slow finish. And I will have a small fade out with a constant gain slope across 150 seconds. I will force them all into 4800 sample rate because that's the sample rate that I use all of my projects, the same amount of channels as the source. So if something comes mono, it will stay mono. If something comes stereo, it will stay stereo. I will use the rebrain free highest quality. So it's a good conversion with no problems whatsoever. I will output WAF wave files with 24 bit PCM. If you're using Ableton Live and you're exporting 32-bit PCM, Ableton Live won't be able to read them because Ableton Live only reads 32-bit floating point. So export to 24-bit PCM so anyone can open them anywhere. Uh, I don't want to embed tempo, no extra information whatsoever. I will use the same source directory for me to replace only these samples. And for this example, I will only use a normalized extra reference so I have a way of separating them. Usually I would just overwrite them and I would overwrite the original files. I'll set convert all. And that's how long it took. There was no spinning in the process. And you can see that's really interesting how much it took down. It brought down a lot of the samples. This way you're also being a little bit more cautious with your gain staging for all of your processing. That way you're not clipping in every stage. Now let's bring all of them back into our DAW and let's compare how uneven they are now. You have to be really careful with the fading because otherwise when you're creating the samples, you will do something like this and you will lose a little bit of the transient. So that's why I only give it five milliseconds. That's around this. And more or less the way the crossfade is set up is like this. So I shouldn't be hitting any transient whatsoever. I am actually cleaning up any click in any case, you might want to try it with three milliseconds. I wouldn't go below two, to be honest. That's a great way to use the batch file item converter as just a tool that you might want to have reprint installed for on your computer 
You don't have to go into the arrangement or the mixer or nothing. You can do everything right here. Probably the one last thing that I forgot to tell you is how to name your files. In Reaper, we have a certain thing called wildcards. Wild so whenever you hit this, it instantly says it will be named just as the source file. And you can add some sort of identifier for you to have a different way of identifying that file. Or you can overwrite the, the original files. Remember that that feature is destructive and you cannot recover those files once you have overwritten them. Be sure to check the other videos that I have done in the channel. I'm sure you'll find a couple of them useful, even if you're starting on Reaper, if you're more or less an intermediate, or even if you have been doing this for a while. If you like these kind of videos, be sure to comment, like, and subscribe, and leave me a comment of what, of what other kind of videos would you like me to make. Straight from Mexico City, my name is Juanchis, and thanks for listening.